Welcome to New On Realist. For the midterm elections of 2018, I decided I would maintain radio silence until it was largely decided, and at least for the House and the Senate races. And, you know, it, with the blue wave not materializing, it's, uh, it was a mixed result, uh, a better night than Republicans uh, probably expected. I figured this video would come out probably on Wednesday, the day after the Tuesday elections. All right, so, I mean, the best paid, laid plans of mice and men, eh? It's Friday, and with no end in sight to the counting of votes in Broward County and Palm Beach County in Florida, I could just hold off no longer. I mean, what's going on there is so overt, so blatant, and so chronic that it, it cannot be remotely legal. I mean, it, it looks like a full-blown attempt to steal a Senate and possibly a gubernatorial election. I mean, this is the oldest trick in the Democrat post-election playbook. You have a vote sump in a state like like uh, Broward County, Florida, a place where the Democrats can expect to get at least in the high 60s to 70% of the vote. The night of the election comes, and they just don't stop counting. They count, they count, they count, they count, and they count. And they make sure that they are the last county to report all the time. Then if they can't find enough votes on election night to make up whatever gap they need to make up, but but it's still within striking distance of a recount, they just keep the count going. Wednesday, Thursday, it's now Friday. Lawyers are, are descending on Florida. What, 65 out of 67 uh, Florida counties managed to do within 30 minutes of the polls closing, you know, uh, what the law requires. And some of those counties had just been hit with a major hurricane, mind you. Somehow Broward County had, uh, couldn't manage this amazing feat of counting votes, which is a task that they they expect to do every two years. Now, I'm I'm a somewhat tolerant person. I like to think uh, if you can explain to me what the problem is and the dimensions of it, I'll accept. Maybe there's no ulterior motive. So Broward County, since you're still in the process of counting up all these votes, can you at least tell us how many votes in total you have to process? No. That's where you know the count's a sham, because we're talking about a finite number of votes here. I mean, there are only so many people who live in Broward County, Florida, that are eligible to vote. If they give you an exact number of the votes remaining that they have to count, then there's really only so much they, they can do to, to commit uh, election fraud. And by law, they're supposed to release those numbers. But if they don't reveal to you how many votes they're dealing with, then they can do just about anything. Oh, look, we just found some more ballots. and They just happen to all be for Democrats. They'll just keep, quote-unquote, counting and counting until they magically find the votes they need to make up the gap needed to put the Democrat over the top. I mean, it's just the delay. All they have to do is delay, start messing with provisional ballots, uh, uh, you know, go to the canvassy. What Florida law says that a county must upload by 7 p.m., on the day before the election, all early votes canvassed and tabulated by the end of early voting and report those results within 30 minutes of the polls closing. Three days later, 60 plus hours later, out of 67 counties in Florida, you know, only Broward County is still counting early votes. Votes that were supposed to have been uploaded the day before the election. I mean, these are early votes for crying out loud. What's the purpose of vo voting early if you're going to be counting after the election's over? This is a joke. The whole thing was predicted by the uh, Miami Herald before the election. They had a long and detailed article on the horrible track record of the Broward County Elections Department, which to no one's surprise is run exclusively by Democrats. Worse yet, the woman in charge of this Keystone Cops operation Broward election supervisor Brenda Snipes, she was already found by Florida court to have illegally destroyed ballots from a 2016 congressional race. Her department has what the uh, Miami Herald, not exactly a, a bastion of Republican support, what the Miami Herald calls a, a quote, patchy track record. <laughs> I think they're being very generous. And this goes back as far as the 2000 Bush versus Gore presidential election. Uh, maybe not Snipes specifically, but this particular uh, election uh, department having, you know, problems. That, that recount thing was a disaster. Uh, I don't know if maybe some of you can remember, 
the guys with the magnifying glasses scrutinizing ballots looking for those infamous ch hanging chads. The Miami Herald reported that they were there on October 2nd, the day that 200,000 uh, mail ballots were sent out to Broward County voters. And Snipes herself said that she anticipated to get half of those back, about 100,000 uh, early votes. So we know the scale of the mail-in votes should be in the vicinity of 100 to 150,000 votes at most, depending on voter participation. It appears to have uh, been about 50-60%. Anyway, it's neither here nor there because this is the simplest engineering problem that ever existed. If before the election, Brenda Snipes said she expected to have to process 700,000 ballots total uh, uh, you know, for Tuesday's elections, which were six pages each. Now, I'm talking about the case of a full recount here. According to her, in late September, she had five machines that could process 500 six-page ballots per hour, basically 3,000 pages per hour. If the ballot is six pages, that means it could do 500 of them per hour. And she requested three more machines that would give her eight machines capable of processing collectively 4,000 ballots per hour. Now, if in a case of a full recount, machine recount, 700,000 ballots would require 175 hours of processing time. That, that'd be over a week. Nine days if you ran those machines 24-7 without any breaks. Now, I guess it, in, in the case, you don't have to prepare necessarily for a full recount. I mean, but uh, as you could see, already before the election started, you have a system in Broward County that is woefully, you know, under-equipped to deal with, with the, the scale of votes that we're talking about. To the point where it looks like, to me, it's deliberately designed to go slowly and, and always be last and significantly late. So unless Brenda Snipes is in, incapable of performing simple arithmetic, you know, but the scenario that I gave you, I, let's be fair, I gave you the case for a full machine recount. But what they're really dealing with right now is basically a mail-in early, mail early ballots. So I mentioned above, they were expecting to get about 100,000 100, of those back. That's what it looks like uh, according to, uh, to what we know. Eight machines processing 500 ballots per hour should go through 100,000 ballots in 25 hours. Now, let's assume five hours on election night since the polls closed at around 7 p.m. Snipes said she normally works till 1.30 p.m. on election nights. No, and this is ridiculous because these are their early votes. They were supposed to have been counted to start the count uh, already before. But let's say they hadn't counted a single vote on election night and started that night when the polls closed. So five hours on Tuesday. Let's say that Snipes, she doesn't run any overtime. She just does the standard eight-hour work shift. So she has her staff work eight hours on Wednesday, another eight hours on Thursday. Okay, it's Friday. That's already, she should have 21 hours of processing done out of those 25 hours that I came up with based on the 100,000 mail-in ballots. So with even an extra four hours, if she needed it, if she has a little more to do without overtime, if they don't report the last of their votes today, we're, we're, then we know that the fix is in. As of this recording, Brenda Snipes just had a press conference saying that she was going to reconvene tomorrow to have the canvassing board review 238 provisional ballots. Now, 205 of those are in dispute, and 33 are provisional early votes. Now, at the end of this, what's my conclusion? That, yes, the Broward County Board of Elections is a horror show and incompetent. But in my opinion, this is incompetence by design. There's no way that you have Brenda Snipes, a woman with a documented history of questionable activities and bad performance when it comes to elections, running that operation after multiple failures and always coming in 67th out of 67 counties for reporting election results. And there's no way that when you know you have machines capable of processing 3,000 pages per hour, meaning that a six-page ballot would result in a machine doing 500 ballots per hour, if you're expecting 100,000 mail-in ballots, you know you're going to need a hell of a lot more than just eight of those machines if you want to knock out 100,000 six-page ballots in one standard eight-hour work shift, you would need a minimum of 25 of those machines. More than three times the number that Snipes budgeted for back in September. 
like I said, planned incompetence. That's all for this new on Realist. Like the video, comment, subscribe to the channel, and click on the notification bell to keep up with the new content. Follow the links to the Patreon or PayPal if you want to support the channel in this time of YouTube demonetization and crackdowns. Or use the tip pledge button if you're watching this on BitChute. Thanks for watching.